good morning to everybody again. It's such a special day, as we say, Happy Mother's Day to all of our, our moms. You know, today for, for many of us, this is a day where we, we celebrate, we acknowledge the fact that we've been so blessed by incredible moms and, and we honor our moms for all that they do for us and all that they have done for us. You know, they bring us into this world in great pains and then they raise us up and they feed us and they take care of us. And then they send us out into the world again at great pains and praying for their children out in the world. You know, if you have a loving Christian mom, you know, this is, a, this is the day that you express your gratitude and you honor your mom today. And men, I'd say to you, to husbands, you need to honor your wives today, the mother of your children. Now, I'll say that every day you should honor your wife. You know, this is a biblical thing to do. First Peter chapter 3 tells us, men, husbands, honor your wives. Show your wife honor. It's such an important principle to live by. And if you don't teach your children to honor their mother, I can promise you this, you're setting your kids on a course of life that is going to be a train wreck. We got to honor our wives, honor our mothers, and teach our children to do the same. And if we honor our wives and our children see that, it brings honor to us. Benjamin Franklin, in his famous work called The Farmer's Almanac, he gave this advice to younger friends. He said, treat your wife always with respect. It will procure or bring respect to you, not from her only, but from all that observe it. Yeah, it's one of the, the key parts of our makeup as men. You know, all of us desire respect, whether you're male or female, but there's something in men, you know, we really, we hunger, we thrive off of knowing, especially that our wife respects us, that we're respected in the world. It's such a, an important part of how God has made us. When you respect your wife, it causes others who observe you respecting your wife and showing her respect, it causes others to respect you. Just by that simple act, it causes your children, when they observe you showing respect to their mother, it causes your children to respect not only their mother, but you as well. You know, for some of us today on Mother's Day, it's kind of bittersweet for, for different reasons. There's, there's some among us who probably and po possibly need to be reconciled with their moms. Um, for others, it's kind of a day of sadness because maybe you've lost your mother recently, or maybe it hasn't even been recent, but... Hopefully, this can be a day of fond memories as well. But on this Mother's Day, we, we want to encourage moms, and it's our hope that all of our mothers out there will experience joy on this Mother's Day, on this very special day. And in our psalm today that we're looking at, we're in a series through the book of Psalms. We're going to be in Psalm chapter 5, and the subject of this particular psalm is ultimately joy, finding joy in our lives, finding joy in the Lord. You know, finding joy even whenever there's adversity in our lives. And in order to do this, in order to experience this kind of joy that God offers to us, there's certain things that we need to make sure of in our lives. Now, this psalm is not specifically addressed to mothers, of course, but the principles of this passage, if mothers will practice them, it will ultimately lead them to experience joy in their lives. So there's some things that you need to make sure of today. Number one is this. You need to make sure that you pray. Look at verse 1 of chapter 5. David says, give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Give heed to the, to the voice of my cry, my King and my God. For to you I will pray. My voice you shall hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning I will direct it to you and I will look up. Now, this psalm is for all of us, but on this Mother's Day, we're, we're going to focus on moms. So, moms, make sure that you pray. You know, we all know how lit, busy life is for a mom. You have to make sure and purposely decide that you're not going to neglect praying to the Lord. David says in verse 1, he says, give ear to my words, to God. Verse 2, he says, give heed to the voice of my cry. In verse 3, he says, God... You will hear my voice in the mornings because I will direct it to you. You know, David is showing us the great privilege that belongs to us as Christians. 
We have the right, we have the duty to talk with God. We have the privilege of expectation. As children of God, we can speak to our Father in heaven and we can expect that he'll hear us, that he'll respond to us, that he'll answer our prayers according to his will. And we can have faith in that. It's an incredible privilege. So God has given us a voice. You know, we're able to, we're able to think, we're able to talk. He's created us with emotions and with needs and a voice to speak. He's created this, this way. We need to use that voice that God has given us and we need to use it to converse with him, to pray to him. You know, in times of trouble and stress, David turned to God in prayer. David was convinced that prayer was a necessity in his life. Prayer is powerful, a great resource for him. Even whenever David felt abandoned by God, he still went to God and prayed. Even if he felt neglected, he himself took it to the Lord. That's how much faith that he had. You know, life is full of choices. It's full of compromises. It's full of sacrifices. And I'll tell you today, mothers, do not let prayer and all the busyness of life, do not let prayer be one of the compromises that you make, one of the sacrifices that you make. Sacrifice anything else. You know, a famous mother, Susanna Wesley, you know, she's famous for several reasons, primarily being that her, two of her sons became very famous. John and Charles Wesley founded the Methodist Church, literally changed England and impacted the entire world for generations, even to this day. But Susanna became a legend as a mother. She delivered 19 children. <laughs> Nine of them died young. Her life, as you can imagine, was real messy at times. She also had 10 living children that she had to raise. She had a husband who was a minister, but not a good one. He was not good with money. He was not a great husband or a great father. So Susanna, she was largely on her own managing this household with 10 kids. She homeschooled them. They were very poor. They're in a rural community. She homeschooled her children. They didn't have any, any money. Her organizational skills of her household have become legendary, mainly because John wrote about them in his autobiography. This mother of 10, she thought it was extremely important that her children spend individual time with her. And so she set a rotating schedule that once a day she'd spend an hour with one of the kids every day, and she did that on a rotating schedule. Wesley said that as a child, his mother had a certain time during the day where they would walk in, they would find her sitting under the kitchen table with her apron pulled over her head like a tent. He said under that apron, under that tent, that she was reading her Bible, that was her prayer time. And the kids came to know that whenever mom had her apron pulled over her head, sitting under the table, because there was no place else that she could be alone and find quiet, they knew that they had to go outside because mom was praying and she was having her Bible study time. Susanna did this every day. She would not compromise her time with God. No matter how messy life got, no matter how many kids were draw, pulling on her for attention, she turned to the Lord in prayer and in faith. And so I would tell you today, moms, don't forget to pray. Even if you have 10 kids who are pulling on you, if you have a husband who's not pulling his weight at home or not helping as he should, take it to the Lord in prayer. This is your privilege. You can cry out as David does. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Let me tell you, if a neglected mother is there calling out to the Lord, I promise you God hears that. God is in heaven, his ears are open to you. You know, your, your kids might not always have open ears to your words. You know, sometimes your husband, he doesn't have his ears open to what you, you are saying, but God always has his ears open. So David says, my voice you will hear in the mornings, O God. I'm gonna speak to you every morning, O Lord, and I will look up, is what he says. I will look up, he's gonna look up in other words, he's going to be looking in expectation that God is going to answer his prayer. You're going to hear my prayer in the mornings, oh God. And then I'm going to look up. I'm going to look out for the answer to my prayers. You know, we need, to, we need to pray. You know, there's something about the mornings as well that prayers are important. You know, we, we can always pray, of course, but there's something about, you know, the Bible seems to set apart that prayers in the morning 
are significant, that God looks at them in a special way because we see it over and over again. I suppose it shows our faith to pray in the mornings, as busy as we are. We're about to go out into the world. We're going to face all the men and women in the world that we have to face. But the first thing we do is we go and face our God. We face, turn our face to him. And that honors the Lord. It humbles us before the Lord. So first of all, what I would tell you today on this Mother's Day is make sure that you pray. Secondly, make sure that you give up envy. All right, look at verse 4. He says, for you are not a God who takes pleasure in wickedness, nor shall evil dwell with you. The boastful shall not stand in your sight. You hate all workers of iniquity. You shall destroy those who speak falsehood. The Lord abhors the bloodthirsty and deceitful man. So number two, make sure that you give up envy. You know, at first glance, whenever you read these verses, you don't really see this principle in that passage, but I assure you that it is there. In these verses, David is praying against unbelievers in the world who do not serve the Lord, but are just serving their own lusts. This is the spirit of the, of the world. It's those who are boastful, workers of iniquity, those, those that are living in sin, that they, they're doing whatever it takes to benefit themselves. They boast about themselves. They speak falsehoods if it will benefit themselves. And David says in verse 4, that God does not take pleasure in wickedness. In verse 5, he says, the boastful, those who boast, will not stand in his presence. In verse 6, he says, he abhors those who are deceitful. Now, this is the reality for all those who are living in the world apart from God. You know, the fact is, we look out at families, you see people around you all the time. They may look like they have it all together, that they're living the dream. They have the perfect homes, they have the perfect clothes, <clears throat> perfect families, all the money, all the material things. Man, it's almost like a contest out in the world. Who can be the best, the most perfect? You know, we as Christians, you Christian moms out there, I would tell you, make sure that you give up envy. Make sure that you're not getting swept up into that worldly, boastful, lying lifestyle. It's so easy for all of us to get swept up in that, in that envy. And you see, that's, that's the problem with envy, by the way, is you know, whenever, whenever we see someone out there who seemingly has it all together, we try to match it. We feel like we, we, we feel bad about ourselves and we try to match it. If they got it, we want it. You know, envy, I would say, is more epidemic today than any other time in history because of social media. We're able to look out at people in the world and see what they are doing. We see it before our face all the time. It didn't used to be like that 20 years ago. You see, now we see what other people are doing. 20 years ago, we couldn't do that. We didn't have all the social media. But the problem is, is that people are only showing you what they want you to see. You're only seeing just a brief moment. You know, we see, it, we, we see those perfect families in all those pictures. We see your perfect family on Facebook or on Instagram. And everything is so perfect. And we look at our own family. We see these perfect families. We look at our own and say, man, we are a mess. We got to get it together. And this family, they look so happy. And they're out there with their matching pajamas around the Christmas tree. I, mean, I, never, I never saw matching pajamas in my life until Facebook was invented. And all of a sudden, and so what do you do? I got to get some matching pajamas. I yell at my kids, stop fighting and just smile. Right? <laughs> Just a moment, though. All right, matching pajamas. <laughs> Nothing wrong with pictures, okay? <laughs> Dan and I put pictures up, and we, look, we make everybody so jealous because we look so perfect. But Dana, I mean, you know, Anna looks great in pictures. My daughter is autistic, and I promise you, if that was a video, it would be an entirely different story altogether. It's just a moment. Moms, make sure that you pray. Make sure that you give up envy. Don't compare yourself or your kids to others. Don't, don't think that you just, you need what other people have. You need what the world says that you need so that you can be happy. Understand, God, God does not take pleasure in the boastful. God abhors deceit. You know, that, that everyone has problems. Every, everybody has messy lives. 
So don't let an envious heart cause you to care more about what your family looks like on the outside than what's really going on in the inside, that you got to be pleasing to God. So God wants us to humble ourselves before him to be pleasing to him. God, God is pleased with the mom who's hiding under a table with her apron pulled over her head praying. That's what God looks at. Stop imitating the world, especially social media. We're here to glorify God, not ourselves. So make sure you pray. Make sure that you give up envy. Number three, make sure that you're led by the Lord. Verse seven, but as for me, I will come into your house in the multitude of your mercy. In fear of you, I will worship toward your holy temple. Lead me, O Lord in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your way straight before my face. So verse seven, David says, as for me, I will come into your house. In fear, I'm gonna worship in your temple. David says, look, let the world boast about themselves. Let them amass all the material things. Let them speak deceit and falsehoods. But as for me, God, I'm gonna come into your house where I will find Mercy. In verse 8, David says, lead me in your righteousness. Make your way straight before my face. What a powerful, God, make your way for me straight before my face so I don't miss it. Let me see what you would have me to do. Now, this is David praying for God's guidance on his life. And he says, I'm going to come into your house, to your temple in fear so that I can get your guidance. And let me tell you today, we are all God's people. If you are a born again believer in Christ, you are God's child. We are God's people. David was God's son, but it was different. David lived in a different time. He lived under the old covenant. We are in the new covenant, the covenant, covenant of the blood of Christ. We are filled and sealed by the Holy Spirit of God. We are part of the body of Christ, the church. Mothers, today, set your heart to be led by the Lord. Just as David said, as for me, I will come into your house. We need to do the same. And let me tell you, the local church is what we do here today. This, this is the vis visible expression of the body of Christ. You know, on the Lord's day, we set apart a day to come together as a church family, to worship together. We meet on the Lord's day. This is the church. The church is wherever we meet as Christians. It can be anywhere. But also on the same, on the other side of the token, it's this. The church, for it to be a church, you're supposed to have a pastor. You're supposed to be, there's supposed to be pastors in that church. There's supposed to be deacons. It's comprised, a church, a local church is comprised of brothers and sisters in Christ who join together, who submit their lives to one another. This is the message of the New Testament. This is the expectation of God for us. We are to gather together in church families with pastors, with deacons. Yes, it's to be organized. We're to hold each other accountable, place ourselves under one another, live life together. That's a church. So as for me, I will come to your church. I will worship you, O oh God, and fear with my fellow believers. Lead me, Lord. Make my way straight before my face, your face. Lead me. You know, moms, today, if this will be your heart, you're going to honor the Lord, and you can know that he is for you. And no matter how crazy life gets, no matter how out of control things may seem to be, if you'll settle on this in your heart, if this will be your heart, you come into the church. You seek the Lord in the place where he tells you that he will be and where he expects you to be. Lord, lead me. You understand? Jesus is our shepherd. This is, the, again, a great privilege of the Christian life. I'm saying that every week now as we go through the book of Psalms. That's kind of the word that keeps coming up. This is our privilege. John chapter 10, Jesus is the good shepherd who goes out in front of the sheep. And his sheep don't follow any other voice. Because they know the voice of the Lord, they will only follow the true shepherd. And those who are following the Lord, he leads them. He goes out before them, making their way straight. That's the honor. That's the privilege that we have as Christians. This is why David says, I will come to your house. David came to God in the way that God prescribed for him to come. 
He knew where the Lord would be. He says, God, lead me. Make my way straight. David was submitting himself to the Lord. And understand, if the Lord's leading, listen, he, he might lead you. That's no guarantee that the path that you're going on, that straight path, that you're following the voice of the Lord, that there won't be some adversity. There's going to be. But if the Lord's out in front of you, leading the way, he's going to make sure that you get through it. Only make sure of this. Make sure you're led by the Lord. All right, one more. Number four, and finally. Make sure that your joy is in the Lord. Verse 11. David says, but let all those rejoice who put their trust in you. Let them ever shout for joy because you defend them. Let those also who love your name be joyful in you. For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor, you will surround them as with a shield. <laughs> now these verses, they're all about joy. Make sure your joy is in the Lord and not in anything else. If your joy is primarily in your husband, if it's in your children, or if it's in your material possessions, those things are very, they're not long lasting. There's no guarantees of these things in this world. You know, your children, your children are gonna grow up. They're not permanent. I mean, they'll always be your kids, but they're going to leave. They're going to go out and start their own families, live their own life. And if all your joy is in your children, you're going to be left very disappointed. Make sure that your joy is in the Lord. You know, David reveals how to, to, to make sure that our joy is in the Lord. In verse 11, he says, let all those who rejoice, who put their trust in you. When we put our trust in the Lord, that's where our joy is to be rooted. That's when we're able to rejoice. Joy cannot be in, dependent on anything else, or it's not truly joy. Our joy must be in the Lord. You know, it's not only for, you see, this is, this is not only for those who are healthy and successful. No, it's also for those who are sick, and for those who are disappointed in life. This is for anybody. It doesn't say only, you know, only those who are healthy and rich that they're going to have joy. That's not what it says. No, it's those who trust in the Lord. Whether you're successful by what the world calls success or if you're disappointed where you are in your life right now, your joy is not contingent upon that. Our joy is to be in the Lord. And David says that joy comes when we put our trust in him. You can put your trust in the Lord no matter what's going on in your life. And maybe that's where you are. You're kind of down and discouraged today. Well, here we see that we, we have a ticket for joy, a permit. Let all those that put their trust in you rejoice. That, that is a ticket for joy. You have permission to be happy and to have joy in your life. You know, some mistakenly think that we as Christians, we have to be down. We have to be beat down by suffering. We have to be constantly convicted about how sinful we are. And if we're living in sin, we should be convicted by it. But you know, if we're real honest about it, some moms, I think, a lot of mothers are beaten down. They, they feel like they're not good enough. And it's almost like some feel like they don't have the right to be happy. Well, here's your ticket for happiness. It's a free pass to joy. Just put your trust in the Lord. This is your right. It's a great joy to trust in God. And if you've never trusted in the Lord, you, you, don't, you really don't know what happiness is. You can keep searching for happiness and all the material things of life. Keep searching for happiness as long as your kids do exactly what you want or as long as your husband does. Man, you can't find true joy in anything else apart from the Lord because everything constantly changes. You can go to all the parties you want to go to. You can go drink all the wine in the world. And it's still not going to keep joy in your life. Joy is only found in trusting God. Man, you can be poor. You can be struggling. You can be lonely in your own home and have more joy than those who are living it up in the palace of kings. You know, that kind of joy is only temporary. But trusting in the Lord, that's forever. David tells us why this is true. He says, let them shout for joy because you defend them. Verse 12, because God blesses the righteous, he surrounds them with a shield. Understand, God is not defending your luxuries. He's not surrounding our money and our material things with his great shield of protection. 
No, our joy must not, you see, that's why our joy can't be in the things of this world. Our joy comes from our trusting God and loving him regardless of what we own and possess. We know that we're his. When we know that there is an eternity of glory awaiting us, that's when we can trust him. We find our true joy. Our joy comes from knowing that we have a guide in our life, that no matter what happens, that we are secure in him. Paul wrote this to the Philippians and listen to what he said. He says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I'll say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known to God. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts, your minds through Christ Jesus. David says we should shout with joy. There are occasions where we should feel the joy of the Lord within us and it should be seen, it should be heard. Have you ever had an experience with the Lord where you feel his presence, where you are in such close proximity to him and you can feel it or that you're moved emotionally to shout for joy? What a moment that would be to know that you're in God's presence, to feel God that close to you. You know, if you're struggling, Listen, I want you to know today that God wants you to be joyful. Now, I'll say this to you moms as well on this Mother's Day. You know, your husbands and your children, they want you to be happy. They want joy in the home. They want peace. They want to, they want to know that you are happy. They want to hear it. So listen, your joy cannot just be wrapped up in how you feel at any given moment. You know, if you're struggling, let, let me suggest to you that you love God more. Because that's what, that's what the psalmist says here. You know, let those who love your name be joyful in you. Listen, if you're struggling today and you don't know where, just start loving God more. And what I mean by that, it's grow in your faith. Get hungry for the word of God. Build your personal relationship with God, regardless of what your husband or what your children are. Love God more, because that's where joy derives. You know, we need to show some enthusiasm for God, the truth of his word. Let let that be, you know, Spurgeon said it this way. He said, a touch of enthusiasm would be the salvation of many a man's religion. You know, some Christians are good good enough people They are like wax candles, but they're not lighted. And he said, oh, for a touch of flame. Then they would scatter light and thus become service to their families. That's why David said, let them shout with joy because there's power in our words. Whenever we speak, the words that we speak matter. They carry with them a certain power. It's like a supernatural thing. What we speak comes from our hearts. And what you speak to your husband, what you speak to your children, mothers, it has a special power. Let the words that come out of your mouth be words of faith and trust, words of truth and hope. And whenever you speak it, it will be. Because God is real and God loves you. So speak words of joy in the home. But all of us as Christians, God's word is true. No matter what circumstances we are facing, no matter how bad this world gets, let us make sure that our joy is in the Lord. David says, let those who love your name be joyful in you. So again, the more you love God and his word, the more joy you're going to have in your life. So this is God's word for mothers today. It's God's word for all of us. There are some things that we need to make sure that we do. Number one, make sure that you pray. Make sure that you give up envy. Make sure that you are led by the Lord. And make sure today that your joy is in the Lord. Join me in prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, we come before you. We thank you for your word today. And God, I pray that you'll take Psalm 5 and encourage every mother in this place. But God, more than that, even just speak to all of us. God, help us all to discover that joy that you have promised us. And help us to live it as Christians in this world. God, we, uh, we give you this time of invitation. May your will be done in every life. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.